speaker and members. AB 385 would require an investment grade analysis be performed on the high-speed rail project as contracted and reviewed by the state auditor. To protect the people of California with long-term infrastructure project of this magnitude, a statewide high-spill network, the uh, legislature should have complete projections and tracking mechanisms made by independent accounting, financial, and transportation specialists prior to funding. Since no high-speed rail system has ever been built in the U.S., reliable data in terms of construction costs, costs of financing these costs, ridership projections, revenues, and operating costs are really non-existent. Therefore, the strategy, if we build it, they will come, leaves our, us and our children with undefined risk, potentially in the billions of dollars for subsidies and debt. For AB 3034, to date, all of the projections have been contracted for and approved by the California High-Speed Rail Authority, who are tasked with the sole mission to build the California High-Speed Rail. This is not really good policy. While the California High-Speed Rail Authority is slated to deliver a financial plan in the fall for a usable segment, the need for an independent third-party investment-grade financial analysis for not only a usable segment, but the entire proposed line must be addressed. This is necessary due to the long-term nature of the project and term limits. This project is very complex with very many moving pieces, and what you are learning and reviewing may be lost with the next assembly group. And we need to leave some kind of tracking mechanism with benchmarks for future legislators and staff so they know what it was we were anticipating when we, when we approved this. As a background, California's Legislative Analyst Office, Bureau of State Audits, California High Speed Rail Peer Review Group have all criticized the Rail Authority for its lack of financial plan, poor management, insufficient planning, lax oversight, and reliance on revenue guarantees for private investors. State Treasurer Bill Lockyer told the San Diego Union Tribune last summer that there is no appetite for the project on Wall Street and that the state shouldn't even try to issue the bonds because it would pay such high interest rate on them if it could find any buyers. However, to skirt this issue, you may not be aware that the high-speed rail bond funds will be combined into offerings from multiple state projects and will not be sold separately. Potential bond buyers, nor the people of California, nor the legislature, and we'll be able to assess the independent market risk of the project through what would otherwise be the normal course of issuing bonds. So ask yourself, if the treasurer says there's no appetite to finance the project due to high risk, why would the state sink untold billions into beginning a first segment of the project until we know what our downside could be? Are we really going to stop once we spend $5.5 billion for the first 120 miles from somewhere near Bakersfield to somewhere near Borden? And these bonds will be competing with schools, local transit, public safety, and water needs. We must have an investment grade analysis performed by an independent entity such as could be contracted by the state auditor's office due to the authority's questionable gathering of data per their peer review group. For example, ridership estimates were projected as high as 117 million passengers per year. And to put this in perspective, consider that Amtrak, Acellus Express, which serves a larger, denser Washington, D.C., New York, Boston route, speeds at 150 miles per hour, counts just 3 million passengers per year. In fact, the entire Amtrak system which includes more than 500 destinations and 21,000 miles of track in 46 states, serves only 27 million passengers per year. Your own democratic analysis states it's impossible to know the degree of confidence the legislature should have in the authority's ridership and revenue forecasts. Just last week, Senator Alan Lowenthal in Long Beach, former Senate Transportation Committee chairman and supporter of high-speed rail, proposed a bill to fire the board and convert the body to an executive branch agency due to lack of confidence in the high-speed rail authority. California continues to run deficits of 20 to 25 billion. By the end of 2011, over 484 million will have been spent on high-speed rail pre-construction activities and hiring over 600 consultants. The original estimate for the entire line connecting the Central Valley, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, San Diego counties was estimated at $30 billion. With what we know today, the entire program to connect the seven cities is really a cost unknown, maybe approaching $100 billion. Only a complete analysis will tell us that. 
Our state is facing severe cuts and significant tax increases. The reality of further federal funds are becoming less likely. Hence, this project will come at the expense of California taxpayers require government subsidy and with the first usable segment result in needless decimation of neighborhoods in the agricultural central valleys. So I think that we need, please, whether you support high-speed rail, you don't support high-speed rail, we really need an investment or independent investment analysis to, so, to allow you to assess the, the risks, weigh the public good against the cost to the public. We have to approach this from an open position. Otherwise, our state could essentially create a budgetary black hole from which we will never escape. And I know none of you want that, supporters or not of the high-speed rail. I have passed out maps of the Hanford area. I have also passed out a week's worth of articles for those of you that need to get up to speed on the rail and also an article from the Los Angeles Times. I do have two testifiers here um, that can further support Please, um, supporters of this bill, please testify, two minutes each. Uh, thank you, Chairman Lowenthal and committee members. Uh, my name is Steve Massaro. I'm president of Preserve Our Heritage. We're an organization uh, comprised of farmers and others with agricultural interests in the Merced, Madera County areas. Our membership is not opposed to high-speed rail if it is done correctly and to the benefit of all. In fact, Thanks to the efforts of Assemblymember Galdiani, we have been actively engaged with high-speed rail staff in trying to bring new alternative alignments to our area that will benefit our local communities and at the same time save thousands of acres of valuable farmland simply by using existing major transportation corridors. I'm here today to support this bill because a major concern of our membership is the escalating cost of this high-speed rail project. We feel that with all the recent claims of mismanagement, the lack of a proper business plan, and the current need to rush construction to meet federal era funding deadlines, it only makes for sound business sense to do an independent investment grade analysis. Considering California's current budgetary situation and given the fact that the High Speed Rail Authority will be forcing quite a few of us to sacrifice our rural life style by dissecting our farms and ranches through the imminent domain process, it is only fair that we ask you to do your fiduciary duty and assure us that this project is financially viable and can stay on track. Preserve Our Heritage respectfully ask you to carry AB 385 forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, please. My name is William Grindley. Um, I am a co-author of a 100-page report on the finances of the high-speed rail system proposed for California, as well as six subsequent briefing papers reviewing various aspects of that finances. Today I have five facts I would like to convey to you because after those studies, we believe that the system is financially infeasible and therefore a burden, not a benefit, to the people you represent. Fact one, all high-speed rail systems in the world require subsidy. Fact two, mega projects overrun their costs, and this one will also. Fact three, ridership forecasts for mega projects are almost always optimistic, and this project's forecasts are also that. Fact four, nearly 30 months after Proposition 1A, the only jobs created by this project are for 600 consultants and staff and the staff costing an average of $350,000 per, uh, per full-time equivalent. Fact five, California's middle and working class will pay two ways for the wealthy and the expense account reimbursed business community to ride the train. They will not be able to afford it and their taxes will go up eight and a half, eight to 11%. No amount of obfuscation, spin, or money thrown into this project will change these facts. This project cannot meet its financial requirements to not operate without a subsidy. And that goes to your law passed in this legislature, section 2704, subsection 8J, the project will not require federal, state, or local subsidies. Please stop the bleeding now. This bill helps. Neither the states nor its citizens can afford to continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? 
Any comments from members, Mr. Shachian? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, probably in the early on, the, the Congress had put some millions of dollars for Florida and California, and now, as of the LA Times uh, uh, report, that all that money be taken away. Uh, does that mean we're not receiving any money from the federal government for this project? You have approximately 2.9 billion already appropriated, allocated, and obligated. You will probably receive little more because the president, to speak to the uh, issue through high-speed rail under the bus in the first hours of negotiating a federal budget, uh, the likelihood of further funding is very, very small. The likelihood of getting $16 billion more is infinitesimally small. And my understanding that now this is to make it more affordable is going to be one way, in other words, one track, not per two parallel. It's, it will only be going one direction and coming back the same direction, not at the same time, but separate times, which the, takes away the, the, the one, concept. One way, two way, the budget is not that different in either one. Uh, I know that there, there has been some work to estimate the ridership. Uh, probably today, as gas prices go up, that might be a different number than when the gas prices are much less. Uh, have you? What is the recent ridership uh, numbers, if you have any? As Assemblymember Harkey uh, said, the original estimates were over 100 million riders in the 10th operating year. In the 10th operating year of Acela, which runs from Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, ridership was approximately 3 million. If you scale up the population of California for the year 2030, you should come out with an estimate of 5 million, roughly 4.97. If you look at that and you even say that the High Speed Rail Authority may do a wonderful job of marketing it, let's double it. But it should not be the 39 million, which is four to eight times what a seller in a high density corridor with a rail ridership history of over 100 years has achieved. Ms. Galciani. I'd like to respond um, to Mr. Shajian's question. Um, first of all, we can't compare it to the Acela because this is a high-speed train that runs at speeds of 220 miles an hour, and so we should be comparing it to high-speed trains in other countries like France and Germany. Um, I've said before that high-speed rail has MOUs with eight countries who have built high-speed rail systems, and given that fact, some of these countries have actually participated in requests for expression of interest with the Federal Railroad Administration, where they have commented on California's high-speed rail system. And I actually looked in the RFEI that uh, France had turned into the FRA, where they looked at the ridership numbers in California and said that kind of basically they were within reason and there was no criticism of the numbers. That being said, there are others that are looking at the numbers. They're doing the due diligence. But the main point being, again, you can't compare this to a Acela because high-speed trains are to compete with the airlines where they're able to take part of the market share from the airlines away and and also be there as, as the transportation needs grow to have uh, to be able to serve part of the uh, passenger travel um, to take that. So you, you can't compare the two at all. This is right. a 220 mile per hour system. Allow me then to compare it to airline transport in the state of California. Approximately 8 million passengers fly between the two megapolises of California, San Francisco and the Los Angeles Basin. 8 million. Some are onward destination, but let's take the 8 million. You scale that up to the year 2030, it looks like about 12 million. 12 million is not 39 million. It's one third of 39 million. All right. The European systems have achieved anywhere from about 35 to 50 percent. The channel itself is about 50 percent of what was projected 14 years ago. Thank you very much. Any other comments from members? If not, Ms. Harkey, would you like to close? I think we've made a good case as to why we need an investment grade analysis. Uh, Chairman Lowenthal, I know you are a supporter of this project, and it's in your benefit and anyone else, Ms. Galgiani, too, as, as she um, moves along with her career, to be sure that this project does work, does pencil, and doesn't sink us into debt. And uh, 
you know, France, I understand, may be entering into a consulting agreement to possibly, uh, you know, get in on the ground floor with offering us a, a, a management contract. The management contract would require a profit. We would have to show some kind of success, which the 120 miles between Borden and Bakersfield will not do unless the cows are going to get on board. And uh, in the meantime, we're tearing up farmlands. Uh, airlines will just have an all-out price war. I mean, how long can the state of California afford? These are, see, these are risk analysis, and that's what Ms. Galjam is bringing up. We need to know the risk, and this would be done in investment grade analysis. This would be done in a bond offering. If we were offering bond for high-speed rail, just particularly high-speed rail, we would have these risks and analysis performed because the investment market would demand it. Now, why the state of California isn't demanding, I don't know, but it just makes my case ever more necessary. Um, I, I think the MOUs, we need to, you, those would be taken into consideration and the terms of the contract. There are so many things that you would get on a 5, 10, 15, and 20 year investment grade analysis of which would have risks, and would you, but you'd have a benchmark to go back to to see where we are, what we are, and what your priorities in the state are. Because once, I'm, afra I'm afraid once this train starts rolling down the track, we will not be able to pull the plug. We will be committed. And I think it would be a shame not to go in with our eyes wide open and understand really the ramifications. High-speed rail, not high-speed rail, we need to know what our risks are, and I think you owe it to yourselves as well as future legislators and the people of California to find out what the risks are and then make that decision if you think it's worth it. But right now we're, we're flying blind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Harkey. I appreciate your continuing interest, although I'm not able to support your bill today. I really appreciate your continuing concern about oversight. I think there are many bills that are going through regarding the uh, fiscal responsibility that we have to uh, make sure that as high-speed rail moves forward, there will be uh, responsible eyes looking at it. And I think Mr. Jeffries, did you want to make a motion? Yeah, I, I support having a dis additional uh, scrutiny and analysis on a project this big that's going to involve such a massive amount of taxpayer funds. I, I think it's reasonable to, to ask for this, and I, I move approval. Was there a second? I don't see. I don't see a second. Um, Ms. Buchanan wants to make a comment, however. Okay, you have a motion and a second. Ms. Buchanan. Yeah, I, we, we served briefly on the budget sub on transportation, and I share some concerns on whether ultimately we're going to have a viable funding model or not um, for high-speed rail. But, you know, when you looked at the, um, at the uh, KPMG report, at the LAO report, um, at, <coughs> at the, um, <coughs> the audit report, they all basically said the same thing, and, and that was that. We needed a management structure in place, and we needed to have someone who could be who could assess the risk of the program on an ongoing basis, hire a risk manager, and that was what we um, asked to do at the um, uh, through the budgeting process last year, and that a report be given uh, to the legislature on a um, on an annual basis. And you know, the, the, my, my concern with doing an investment grade analysis right now is that one, I'm not sure we have enough money to do uh, information to do a quality investment grade analysis because I think there's considerable information out there that's missing. And two, I mean, I would like to believe that the risk analyst that is supposed to be hired and part of the the, uh, the new management team actually can can uh, provide that information. Thank you, Ms. Buchanan. We do have a motion. Mr. Miller? A second the motion. Yes, we have a motion and a second. Could you call the roll, please? Motion to pass to appropriations. Lowenthal? No. Lowenthal? No. Jeffries? Aye. Jeffries? Aye. Ashajian? Aye. Ashajian? Aye. Blumenfield? Bonilla? Buchanan? Ng? Furtani? Galgiani, Logue, Miller, Miller I, Norby, 
Portentino, Valorio, three one at phone call. Galgiani, no. Three two at phone call. Three two, your bill is on call, Ms. Harkey. Thank you very much, Madam Thank Chair, you. and I look forward to working with you.